Hello, it is Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. I'm Chris Primo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. We're going to be solving a midweek mid-difficulty crossword today. It's a Wednesday-themed puzzle, and it comes to us from a new constructor. Um, and this midweek mid-difficulty edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Mitchell Turek, William Camtron, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are, of course, benefactors of the Daily Solve, and they keep this channel going through the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate that. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who is a patron. It makes a huge difference. And if you'd like to directly support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve, or click the link in the description field underneath the video, where, of course, you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons as well as the official mug for benefactors. So thanks again if you do support the channel. It really uh, means a lot to me. So thank you. And uh, you can also, of course, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That is a big help. Uh, like the videos, comment on them. Those things all help as well. And also, I just enjoy the comments. So so that's nice also. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which I uh, whose comments I also enjoy reading. And you can join that via a description field link as well. All right, let's get on to today's puzzle. This is, as I mentioned, a debut construction. This one is by Will Fadenhauer, and it was uh, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It will have a theme, of course, and let's find out what it is. Let's start solving. Okay, Caterpillar EG. This could be either, you know, the larval stage of an insect or, or you know, larval stage of a butterfly, or it could be a piece of, a, of heavy equipment, the brand Caterpillar. And I don't know which I think it's more likely to be. Let's look at the, these. One spewing hogwash. Okay, if this was a larva, this could be a liar, hogwash, rot, tripe, false. So let's just put those in and see. Because freedom can't protect itself organization. Probably the ACLU, um, the American Civil Liberty, Liberties Union would be my guess in four letters starting with an A. But I'm not certain because, because I'm just not certain. So I'm fairly, fairly confident. But let's check the crosses just in case. Seal the wind, seal the wind, so to speak. Yes, to ice it, to seal the wind. Great. So I, so I do think this is correct. Uh, xenomorph. Right. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen this in the crossword before. Maybe I have. I can't remember. But it doesn't seem likely. In any case, this is the word that I think was... I think it was coined to describe the creature in the Ridley Scott film Alien, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it maybe it pre-exists that that film. It's not used in the film itself, but uh, I don't know. Actually, I, I actually don't know when this was when this was originated, but I'm I'm quite certain this is the answer. So. Anyway, pull in to rein in to sort of constrain someone or something. And then YouTube unit would be a view. I hope this video gets gets a fair number. That would be nice. And then when Santa and the Tooth Fairy are most active at night, I suppose, it's when they're said to perform their duties. To behave uncontrollably is to run wild. And an exclamation of mild surprise would be, gah, or something like that, maybe. Uh, could be. Let's look at this. Digitally crisp, informally. Yeah. Uh, something about HD. Um, digitally crisp. High, oh, high DPI? High dots per inch? I don't, hmm. I don't know what this would be then. Yeah, I'm not sure. Constellation whose mane and shoulders are known as the sickle. Well, the mane is a bit of a giveaway there because lions have manes, so probably Leo. G is the exclamation. Oh, high def. Oh, sorry, I don't know. This is the most obvious, the most obvious answer to digitally crisp would be high def, high definition, uh, and, and obviously informally, so in this abbreviated way. And uh, yeah, I, do, I don't know why I didn't get that immediately. To tuck something away would be to hide it. What's blank face? What's his face, you could say? What's his face or what's her face? If one owns something, one has it. And if you went off script, you ad-libbed, probably. 
One sharing an armrest could be a seatmate in an aircraft, maybe. Or a train. Give it a rest, you might declare exasperatedly. Rod in a hot rod. An axle? So a hot rod is a is a souped-up car, and this could be a you know rod that connects the wheels, the axle. Um and then here we have kind of bikes for stunt riders would be BMX, right? Kind of, uh, you know, the, the if, as it says, you do stunts in BMX. I actually don't know. What, I was trying to think what BMX stands for, and I don't think I know. No, I don't know. Maybe the M is motor something. I, it's never occurred to me to wonder what. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. Someone will tell me, perhaps. To stagger with unexpected news, maybe. To throw off balance, throw doesn't work there. To some, it's something off balance, clearly. To stagger somebody with unexpected news, to catch off balance. There we go, that's what it is. Okay, you caught me off balance. You staggered me with unexpected news. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe owned a black one, apparently, appropriately, a oh, black cat, appropriately enough, since he wrote a story uh, whose title was exactly that. And wood once used for hockey sticks could be ash, I suppose. I didn't know that, but it looks like it's probably the answer based on the, the A. Take a blank at besmirch. Take a shot at somebody to snipe at them, to say something unkind, perhaps. Team with a sausage race at every home game. <laughs> no idea what this is. That's funny. The something, the, the some somethings. Gender neutral neutral pronoun is them. And burger, fries, and a drink at a special price, e.g. could be a combo, combo meal. Toy shooters are BB guns. Yeah, that looks that looks right. And then poet who taught at Amherst College. Must be Robert Frost. I didn't know that offhand, but based on the F and the S, I, I think that must be right. To share again as a story would be to retell it. God in Islam would be Allah. So now we've got this little corner up here. Let's see if we can fill this one out. Wepner's 1975 opponent in the ring. Oh, I don't know. I mean, if I had to guess, it would be Ali because he's <laughs> obviously I, it's pretty much the most famous boxer. And I assume that's what this is referring to. And it fits in three letters. So let's try it and see. Rifle filler, ammo, ammunition. There we go. I think this is probably right. Bank offering, a bank could offer a loan, perhaps, a home loan, maybe. Sorry situations could be... I'm not sure. What about this one? Progressive rock, question mark. So it looks like, it, it, it reads as though it's referring to the genre of music, progressive rock. But the question mark suggests it isn't. So maybe a physical rock that that is moving, that's rolling. I'm, um, I'm not sure, sorry. Full-bodied red wine, a Malbec. That fits, but that C, that C was the give, real giveaway there, wasn't it? Like Christmas lights after December 25, often. Um, on late, I don't, it doesn't make any sense, I'm not sure. Sorry situations, oh, ills, as in, you know, you're beset by ills. You're beset by difficult situations. Sorry, situations. That could that could be the answer. Does that help with this? Progressive rock, molten lava. There we go, because it is it is <laughs> rock that is literally progressing down a slope. Uh, very good. Not yet determined abbreviation. Well, my first thought here would be TBD, which literally stands for to be determined. But since determined is in the answer, I assume we're not going to, sorry, since it's in the clue, I assume we're not going to use it in the answer, even in abbreviated form. So it could be TBA to be announced, which I always think of as distinct from, from to be determined, because something that is to be announced could, in fact, already have been determined, but simply not yet revealed. Whereas if something is to be determined, to me, that, that suggests it has not actually been decided or figured out. So anyway, I think the answer is TBA, but I slightly take issue with it. Uh, like Christmas lights after December 25th often on sale, of course, because who would be in the market for those then? You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel. 
Mr. Grinch. This is one of the truly, truly great vocal performances. I just think, I, I think this, uh, I think it's, is it Thurl Ravenscroft, I think, who sang You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch? And I just think it is honestly one of the, one of the most distinctive, certainly when it comes to kind of novelty or comedy performances, I think it's just absolutely one of the best thing that's ever, things that's ever been committed to tape. It's a great song. Okay, Croft of the Tomb Raider franchise. That's the, the video game character, video game and film character, I suppose, Lara Croft. Uh, Parks and Rec is NBC sitcom to fans, so that is the familiar name of the show, Parks and Recreation. Sanctuary Against Extinction could be an arc, famously Noah's Ark uh, in the Bible. And then Word After Life or Time could be Life Saver or Time Saver. Like Krona coins, uh, those are Swedish, and there are <laughs> there are a few Krona, Kroner, and I always um, I always kind of mix up which is which. But <laughs> fortunately, I had the S here to uh, to remind me that this is Swedish. Busyness represented us. So I pronounced that intentionally in a kind of overdone way because I was trying to draw attention to the fact that it's not the word business busyness represented. Oh, a bee. A bee is a kind of the, the representation of busyness, a busy bee, kind of the epitome of busyness as reflected in that, in that idiom. Orchestral group pitched to see oboes. Um, we'll tune, uh, tune to see the note to see. And then if you stoked a fire, say you fed it, Oh, right. Here's our theme, which I haven't been paying attention to or even noticing. Eccentric sort sort, or a sport or one might make the plays at 1927 and 44 across. Uh, to might make the plays at run wild, caught off balance. One might make the plays at run wild. What on earth does that mean? Run, catch, maybe it's just run, catch, eccentric sort, run. This will be something like thrown out of whack or something like that. Cause to malfunction. Yeah, that's, that's probably the case. It just looked like it based on the, the fill. So this is run, catch, throw, right? I mean, it's funny. It doesn't say the first parts of 1927 or 44 across. So there's something I'm missing about this. Run wild, catch off balance, throw out of whack. An oddball, I, I guess. Let's see, odd numbered words. I mean, the first word in each of these is odd numbered, but then in catch off balance, you'd need catch balance. And in throw out of whack, you'd need throw of, which isn't helpful. Oddball or a sport. Oh, because you're doing it in an odd way. Sorry. Okay. So you're running in a wild manner. You're catching off balance and you're throwing out of whack. I see. So it's a, it's right. I see. That's why sport is in quotation marks. It's a fictional sport as though you habitually perform these plays in these off kilter manners. Okay. I see. Very good. Okay. Candle lighting occasion in brief could be a birthday, a B day, maybe. Penne a la vodka is a fairly famous recipe. In case could be less, lest you forget, in case you forget. And an exam for a future AG that'll be attorney general, I would think. So um, an LSAT, the law school ad, uh, admittance test or something. It's something like that. Um, here we have sits and waits. If one sits and waits, one idles. Here we have dance with a series of spins. Could be salsa dancing. And a big hotel chain is Hyatt, that's certainly the case. Okay. So what was this one then? Oh, the T of 57 down in 66 across is test. So there we go. Easy enough. Prudence with money is thrift. Um, and article of cool weather wear is a hoodie, maybe? To solidify, is if something solidifies, it sets, maybe? 13th or 15th days on the Roman calendar. There we go. The Ides, most famously of March, but you could have 
Ides of other months as well. And sometimes it's the 13th rather than the 15th day, as it says in the clue. So, so yeah, that does look like set. To drive is to fire, to, to drive you to do something, to fire you to do it, to, hmm. Team with a sausage ray. Oh, no. No, what is this? The, I was going to say the Braves, but that doesn't fit at all. Uh, the, I don't know what this is. Sorry. I'm sure it's screamingly obvious to anybody who knows anything about whatever sport this is, which I don't even know. Uh, gardener, gardener's tool is a hoe. And then that is connected to the creation and rhyme of 48 across. Uh, row. Oh, okay. As in to hoe a row in, yes, in the soil, right? For the purpose of gardening. So there we go. Oh, the brewers. Okay. So drive is fire. How do I, oh, I see. It's, it's a noun as in you have drive, you have fire, you have an internal kind of motivation. That's what's, that's what that is. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, there we go. I think we've finished off that corner. I think we've looked at all the crosses. So here we have swing, singer Stefani, Gwen Stefani. There we go. Uh, blank to pick and knit to pick. In other words, you pick knit, you're in knits, you're a knit picker. You find small faults in people or things. Manning of ESPN's Manning cast. Well, at least I've heard of Eli Manning. So I guess, I guess he's got a show or podcast called Manning cast and learning app with an owl mascot is the uh, language learning app Duolingo famously. Walrus Ivy is one traditional medium for it. An Inuit something, an Inuit what? I'm not sure. Art? Uh, medium, medium, medium would make sense for art, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and then semiconductor device is a diode. That sounds right. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, for one. A name, right? Okay, yes. Uh, right, how does that go? John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my name, too. I think it goes on. It goes and then it continues. Okay, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, um, genesis of that rhyme is or what it, what it means exactly, but certainly heard it before. Mardi Gras, there we go, Fat Tuesday, literally. And um, it might say welcome, a welcome mat maybe in front of a door. And then New York giant known as Master Melvin. Oh, right. Wow. I don't think I've actually seen this in the grid for a while. And I don't think I've, I, I either have never seen or don't remember having seen this Master Melvin nickname. I think that's new to me. But it's Mel Ott, who is, who is absolutely one of the one of the famous baseball players who shows up in the New York Times crossword, but not in a little while. He used to show up absolutely all the time. Uh, just one of those names you have to know to solve the New York Times crossword. And there we go. That was the Wednesday crossword. That was a midweek mid difficulty grid. I think it was probably probably about that. Um, Maybe on the slightly gentle side, all things considered. I don't know. Let me know how you felt about this one. And we had a very funny theme that I, even after the even after the whole thing was filled in, it took me a while <laughs> to understand exactly what was going on here. And it's just a, it was just a simple pun. It's just let's play oddball in which you perform all of the actions in an off kilter way, running, catching, and throwing, done wild, off balance, or out of whack. That's how it, that's how you play the game. And, uh, and that's how you solve this crossword. And there we have it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday crossword, where the theme will probably get a little bit more involved, um, unlike the last few days where they just we just solved them by filling out the clues. Probably not tomorrow, but we'll have to wait and see. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.